Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Acer Aspire Switch 10. This is the latest Windows 8 hybrid convertible, whatever you want to call it, one of the affordable ones. This is $379, 10.1 inch, you get both the keyboard and the dock, and yes, it comes apart. This is magnetically attached right here, strongly magnetically attached. We're going to look at it now. No, somebody didn't break the laptop. This is one of these Windows 8 hybrids, convertibles, transformers, whatever you want to call them. All those names fit just fine. It's also wildly affordable. For those of you who have been watching us for a while, you might remember when we reviewed the Acer W510. That was one of the first Intel Atom-based Windows 8 affordable convertibles. It cost more than this, but it was still a lot cheaper than full Windows 8 Ultrabooks at the time. They keep getting less expensive, they keep getting better at design, so now fast forward to 2014 and we have the Acer Aspire Switch 10. 10 because it's a 10.1 inch tablet and you know, you get the idea, 10 inch around the size of the uh, iPad Air or so, uh, more manageable. A little bit lighter than the 11.6 inch and bigger Windows tablets for those who, who really like that form factor of the Android 10 inch tablet or the iPad Air, but you need and want Windows. Well, this is the this is the one that's trying to convince you you should buy it. Acer and design. Well, they make a couple of pretty things like the uh, S7 Ultrabook with glass on it. It's really beautiful. They also make a lot of kind of aluminum or faux aluminum, depending on the price of the product slabs. This one goes in that category. It's actually, it's not bad looking. It's not slippery. It doesn't show fingerprints. All these things put it ahead of the Asus Transformer T100 we reviewed a while back, which has similar specs, similar pricing. They're neck and neck fighting each other. Personally, even if this is kind of your basic silver slab, I think this one's a little bit nicer looking. Speaker is right here, aiming at you. Always a brilliant thing, isn't that? Down here. Now this is a magnetically attached relationship the keyboard and the tablet have. And there is the data pin connector over here. So that's how that works. So it's magnets, there's locator pins, we'll show you that. But that's what this stuff is for on the bottom. Side here we have volume controls and we have power button right there. And we've got our headphone jack. Combo mic headphone jack. This has a built-in microphone like most all Windows 8 tablets and Ultrabooks, and it has a front 2 megapixel video chat camera as well. Nothing up top. Here's where most of your ports are. Micro SD card slot, microphone hole right there. We have a micro USB 2.0 port and a separate charging port. Yay! Often these win smaller Windows 8 tablets, they use the micro USB port for charging, so you can't use an external USB peripheral at the same time as charging. You are going to need a USB host adapter, and yes, indeed, it does work. Here we've got a portable hard drive. I'm going to grab, and we'll take a look at that. So this is a Western Digital My Passport hard drive. Normal stuff right there, 750 gigs. You don't have to worry about NTFS or anything like that because this is Windows. And we have a little USB host on the go adapter. So this is a USB host adapter, the same kind of thing you would use with an Android tablet. That little sound is Windows saying, yay, I found a piece of hardware right there. And here it is, it's opened up our D drive contents right here. So you've got the USB port there, all you have to do is find one of these $15 dongle adapters. For this price, they're not included, so there's that but you can actually use any Windows supported USB peripheral. This is full Windows 8.1 32-bit, so it's not RT, it's not some pared down operating system. Any peripheral that works on Windows is going to work on this tablet. Also on this side we have a micro HDMI port. Now Windows 8.1 supports Miracast wireless display as well, but for those of you who prefer the wired approach to things, there's that, and that's our little charging port. And the charger is like a smartphone size little wall wart charger pretty easy to deal with. And what does the back look like? It has that kind of brushed metal look to it. Again, it doesn't really show fingerprints much. It's neither fantastic nor icky. Not bad. Again, for $379, you are not going to be getting the apex of design and materials here. And it feels, you know, it, it's light, but it feels like it's put together well. It doesn't creak. It's sturdy enough. And included in the box is Part B. This is your keyboard dock right here. This trackpad is large and it's surprisingly nice to use. Often with these transformer, especially budget models, it's not a great experience. This one, it works nicely. Even multi-touch gestures, two finger scrolling, that sort of thing. Also, notice the keyboard layout, 10.1 inches. So if you're a guy with really big hands, 
you might still find it cramped, but as a 10 inch goes, this is the best use of space that I've seen. The keys are as large as they can be. They're larger, say, than on the Asus T100 transformer. It feels, operates, they're, they're damped nicely. It feels just like a laptop keyboard and a decent one at that, not some budget nastiness at all there. Function keys up here, you got your FN key. So we've got things like brightness doing double duty with the arrow keys there. You can of course use on-screen controls. The finish matches, the color matches. So, and you can see the, the level of keyboard travel there. For something this small and thin, it's not bad. Now the tablet weighs, as I said, 1.29 pounds. If you put it together with the dock, you're up to 2.54 pounds, which isn't too bad. So here's where the docking thing happens. It's a magnetic dock. It's a moving hinge over here. So there's two locator pins, and then there's some pretty strong magnets in here, and there's little rubber cushions so you don't wear the tablet down. And it's it's not too hard. I mean, it really yanks together. It wants to. And it's quite a strong magnet. It takes two hands most of the time, except for if you do it like that. If you put, pull it straight up, it will hold. I'm not advising you to carry it like that, but it's it's pretty darn strong. So it goes pretty far back as well, like so. So that's nice. IPS display here. Very nice display. Quite bright, very sharp. 1366 by 768. Okay, it's not full HD. This is a $379 product. You're not going to get full HD, but the nice part is with Windows 8.1, you don't have to apply any scaling. 1366 by 768 is viewable easily enough without applying any Windows scaling. And if you close it, Nice, tidy, unified looking package. Kind of looks like a netbook. And in a way, these devices with the Intel Atom in them are kind of the, the new netbook in a way, but better. And that speaks for how Windows 8 actually is kind of cool after all. Like nobody really wants a netbook anymore, do they? But everybody wants one of these little transformer guys because of the fact that you got the touch UI, UI in the metro half of Windows 8.1 more touch optimizations, and of course improvements in Intel Atom CPUs, you've got something that's much more usable and much more fun. So you can use it like a laptop, and this is what my hands look like on it, and I'm six feet tall, so I don't really have small hands at all. It might be skinny fingers, but they are pretty long. I'm used to small devices. It's usable. It's not a horrible experience whatsoever. I like it better than, say, using the Microsoft Surface touch cover. At least you get movable keys here. It's certainly as good as the, the type cover, too. But there's more tricks here. Now, this is kind of weird. Okay, everybody's copying the yoga, right? Lenovo yoga is pretty popular, so everybody wants tent mode, presentation mode, all that sort of thing. And that's something that you need on something like the yoga, because it's an all-in-one permanently connected device. So with this, really, if you if you just want to use it like this, you can. Granted, you got to go get a stand or something like that. If you want to put it on the desk, you can. And the whole purpose of presentation mode is in part, perhaps, doing this or even 10 mode but you can do that because Aether said hey everybody likes to do that so we got the magnet thing going on here we can put this on backwards it's been designed to work like that as well and there you have presentation mode if you like tent mode you can tent mode it they squared off the edges there so it's very stable so you can tent mode it too the dock has no real brains in it other than it has a USB 2.0 full-size port. So for those of you who don't want to deal with that whole micro USB dongle adapter for USB host on the tablet itself, you have a regular USB port available right there. Now Acer has said that they're going to offer a version that has a hard drive in the dock, and that wouldn't be a bad thing at all because not much storage on these little affordable tablets, so that would be a way of augmenting it. I mean, of course, you can use removable hard drives to put your media on and all that stuff, but Windows doesn't like you to install programs on removable drives. There are registry hacks and ways around that, but still. The dock is held together with a bunch of Phillips head screws on the bottom, but again, there's really not much of anything in this model. So what's inside? We have the Intel Atom. This is a Bay Trail CPU, the Z3745. That is a quad-core, 1.33 gigahertz. It has turbo boost up to 1.86 gigahertz. 
it's similar to all the other Bay Trail tablets and convertibles that are on the market in terms of performance. In other words, this is not as fast as an Ultrabook with an Intel Core CPU by any means. And the benchmarks will tell us that, but let me finish with the specs first. Two gigs of DDR3 RAM is not upgradable. This guy is pretty much sealed here and the RAM is soldered on board. For storage, the other thing with the Atom is it uses eMMC storage. Remember MMC cards, kind of like SD cards? It's a slower form of flash storage than SSD drives. So that will hold back performance a little bit. And I'll show you the crystal disk mark in a bit so you can see what those scores are, but nothing like an SSD drive, but not worse than a spinning conventional 5400 RPM hard drive. You can get it with 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage. This is full Windows 8.1, so that's not a lot of space. The 379 model has 32 gigs of storage. There's about 17 gigs free, that's all. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the fastest computer in the world. You're not going to be doing CAD work on this, and you probably won't be installing a lot of fat programs. The idea with these guys is you get Office 2013 Home and Student Edition on here. You're probably going to be using this for Office, for web, for social networking, for playing videos, a lot of which stream from the cloud. Acer has a bunch of cloud services installed on this, and you know what I mean. You're not going to be putting a lot of stuff in terms of programs probably locally on here, and with the 32 gig model and 17 gigs free, you don't plan on putting a whole lot on there. The 64 gig model is 429, so that puts us at $30 more than the ASUS Transformer T100. It directly competes against, and what are you getting that's better here? You're definitely getting a better typing experience on this, and I think a more attractive, less fingerprinty, less creaky design. But other than that, the specs are pretty much the same. So here's our Crystal Disk Mark scores for those of you who are technically minded and are well fond of that benchmark for measuring drive speed and uh, again, there's about a third to a quarter of the speed that you'll see on really good fast SSDs on Ultrabooks, but it's not any worse than a conventional hard drive. In terms of other benchmarks, PC Mark 7 is scored 2501. Uh, Ultrabooks score around 4800, but as Bay Trails go, that's actually pretty good. It actually is holding its own okay against the, the latest generation Intel Pentium, which is also used in budget devices that cost a bit more than this somewhere priced in between Ultrabooks and this sort of device. For W Prime, it computed Pi in 36.05 seconds. That's about 10 seconds slower than an Ultrabook with a Core i5. And Geekbench 3, 32-bit. Since this has Windows 8.1 32-bit on it, we have to run the 32-bit test. 792 single-core, multi-core 2326. So that's about one-third the score of a Core i5 for single-core and about half for the multi-core score. I, the numbers are going to be a little bit lower because it's a 32-bit test and 64-bit usually scores a little higher. Does that mean that this is a terrible product to use? No, it's not. It's responsive enough, it's fast enough, it's not like the Atom from your 2009 era netbook by any means. Again, that's full Windows 8.1 right there, and we have access to the desktop and everything you can do there. Uh, one thing I will say is Acer has put a surprising amount of kind of like bloatware on this, given that there's not much storage, and usually this little PCs that can't do as much don't get as much bloatware. A lot of it is really just web shortcuts. Like if we take a look right here, you can see we've got Spotify here loaded. We've got Amazon loaded here. We've got eBay. They're partnering with a whole lot of people. There's also Acer's cloud services on here. And that's not a bad thing. You're going to need some cloud services to store stuff since you don't have much storage. And Acer figures you might want to use them. Remote file access. We've got booking.com. You can remove all this junk happily if you want. Acer includes their own video player. That's something that you see more often on Android because you know, the core video player may not support so many codecs and all that sort of thing. So it's a little bit odd to see it here, but one of the reasons is because it, it ties into their cloud media player services, as you can see right here. So if you want to play videos off the cloud, it can help you out with that. Since this is full Windows, we have IE right here, and there's our website, Mobile Tech Review, and you get the Metro version of the browser as well. Now that's a pretty sharp and clear screen and the speed's just fine. Let's, we're going to do our usual video playback test and we'll do our video of the Lenovo Yoga 2 13 inch. Okay. So we'll test out this video here and this is regular Windows so this is Flash Player folks. You don't have to worry about side loading Flash Player or compatibility. And we'll switch up to 720p because that would be appropriate for this display resolution and go full screen. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And today we're going to look at a yoga by the Lenovo. Speakers We've done are that good. Several times. Well, this is the wow. latest generation Lenovo Yoga 2, not Pro, 
just yoga too. So this is a little bit lower end model, less expensive, and this is the 13 inch. So it looks good. It sounds good. I'm pretty darn impressed with this. Again, for the price, it's, this is not bad performance whatsoever. It can certainly handle the included MS Office 2013. You can do some Photoshop on here even. I would not really recommend this for people who want to edit HD video all day, all night long, or even for many hours a week because it just doesn't have the brain power for that sort of thing. Again, you get the Intel Atom Quad Core in here with Intel HD graphics, not even HD 4200 or 4400. So you get the idea that it can certainly handle streaming video playback just fine. You could stream 1080p since it has HDMI out. That can make some sense because you might want to plug it into your HDTV. It can handle all that stuff just fine. So for, for basic work, getting stuff done in a very portable way for the, the goodness of having a tablet and something that can run Windows and act like a little portable laptop sort of netbook, if you will, only smarter than the netbook of years ago, it gets that job done just fine. Tablet has... 802.11bg and dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, high speed as well. Again, two megapixel front camera for video chat. You can use it with Skype or whatever kind of chatting you want to work with. And obviously, if you have a MiFi or a mobile hotspot feature on your phone, you can get data anywhere. There is no 3G, 4G option here in the U.S. for this product. So games, how about games? Here's We're in the Windows Store right now. There's all sorts of games on the Windows Store that are well suited to these sorts of tablets that have modest CPUs inside, and you can play these just fine. And that includes some fun things like the, the Halo for Windows Metro, all that sort of thing. Obviously, Intel Atom in here, this is not a gaming PC. You are not going to be playing Half-Life for PCs on here. You're not going to be playing the latest Battlefield on this. You can't even really do that on an Ultrabook in a pleasing fashion, but... I, you could put you could put Civ 5 on here and you know lower all the settings and Civ 5 is actually pretty computationally heavy especially as civilizations advance so you might notice it getting kind of slow so yeah I know there's some of you that always push the envelope and you're using the Dell Venue 8 Pro and playing some crazy games on there I won't say you can't do it but most people will find it more enjoyable to stick with the Metro games now other than the optional version with the hard drive in the dock, which is not out yet. Let, let's just forget about that part right now since it doesn't even exist. All of the brains are in the tablet. So you get your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, you've got your internal storage, everything, your CPU obviously are in here. So you can take this guy with you. You don't need the bottom to be productive other than in terms of typing. And that full-size USB port for convenience sake. This has a two-cell lithium-ion battery sealed inside. If you popped off the casing back, I'm sure you could eventually get to it for service purposes. Acer claims it's good for up to eight hours of runtime. So far in the tests, it's doing at about seven. That's what brightness set at a more than adequate 50% because this is such a nice, bright IPS display. I haven't had to run it that bright at all. So it's up there with the Android tablets in terms of runtimes, which is pretty good. Obviously, it's not going to last as long as the iPad Air, but not much does. And this does do have a lot more overhead going on because you've got full windows on board. So that's the Acer Aspire Switch 10. It's just starting to become available now in stores again. It starts at $379 and yeah, if, if you want one, I say go buy one. It's pretty darn good. Good keyboard, nice display, very light, very portable. Can't go wrong for the price. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and don't forget to hit that like button.